Good morning. Welcome to this uh, Voice on Africa. My name is Yaki Silia. I'm the head of African Futures and Innovation at the Institute for Security Studies in our Pretoria office. And today I'd like to talk to you about Africa, its young population and the demographic dividend. Now, Africa is the youngest continent in the world, and we often speak of Africa's demographic dividend. The fact that the future, the future of Africa belongs to us, well, not to me perhaps, because we are young. Now, I'm going to argue that Africa's population is so young that it actually constrains development, and that this will only change around mid-century. By mid-century, I mean about 2050. Africa at the moment has about 1.3 billion people, and we have such a rapid population growth that by 2050, our population will be two and a half billion people. Most of these are young people. We consider young people to be uh, of age 15 and below. At the moment, about 41% of Africans are below 15 years of age. Uh, in the rest of the world, that figure is only 23%. Almost half of Africa's uh, compared to the African youthful population. The reason for this is that Africa has exceptionally high fertility rates. Fertility rates are the number of births per woman during her time when she would have children. In Africa, it's about 4.5 children per woman. The average in the rest of the world is about 2. So, if we were to look at sub-Saharan Africa, that would even be a little bit higher. Now, economic growth is determined by three factors. It is determined by the contributions made by labor, capital, and technology. The technology is sometimes referred to as total or multi-factor productivity. Let's just look at labor. The contribution of labor to economic growth can largely be determined by the size of the working age population to um, the other two components, capital and uh, technology. We normally measure the size of the working age population by the number of people that are in the age bracket 15 to 64 years of age. This relationship is so important that that relationship alone, the relationship of the working age population to dependents, elderly and children, determines one third to half of total economic growth rate. This is huge. Now, from 1966 to about 2012, we saw a steady increase in the relationship between the number of working age people to elderly and dependents. Globally, it peaked in 2012 at about 1.9 worker in the age of 15 to 64 to dependents. From 2012, that relationship has slowly declined. In actual fact, what we see is that the world is today generally in a slow growth environment. This, of course, is not the situation in Africa. So, we can measure the demographic dividend by the relationship of working age people, 15 to 64, to dependents. If that is 55% uh, of more of your total population is at working age, economies generally grow. Another way of looking at the demographic dividend is to look at so-called median age. Median age means that point at which half the population is younger and half older of that age group. So we get to a population dividend, a country is in its demographic dividend, when the median age is between 25 and a half years to 41 years of age. So any country that is of median age of 25 and a half to 41 years of age generally has, is well positioned for future and rapid economic growth rate. South Africa is an example of a country that has just entered that sweet spot. Sweden is a, an example of a country that is just exiting that demographic sweet spot of 25 and a half years a median age. If we look at the population structure in Africa, East, Central and West Africa have very large young growing populations. Southern and Northern Africa are two regions that have older populations and where the population increase is much uh, slower. The median age in Sub-Saharan Africa at the moment is 19 years. In other words, only we are several years away from Africa getting to a median age of 25 and a half years. We only get to that, according to our forecast, in the year 2052. 
That's when Africa will start growing rapidly, as from mid-century onwards. The second factor is at what rate Africa gets to its peak demographic dividend. So it's not only the size of that dividend, but at what point we get to it. China got to its peak demographic dividend of 2.8 workers per dependent in 2010. And it peaked at 2.8 workers per, uh, uh, 2.8 people in the age bracket 25 and a half to 41 uh, to dependents. The Asian Tigers got to it around the same time. China is now experience a rap experiencing a rapid decline in the relationship of working age people to dependents. Whereas China peaked at 2.8, Africa at the moment has got 1.3 work, uh, people of working age population relative to dependents. We will peak in 2072. And we will peak significantly below the rate at which China peaked. China peaked at 2.8. Africa will only peak at 2. So not only do we peak is it several decades before we get to a peak, but we also peak at a much lower rate. Those two factors translates into slow growth. India, by the way, will peak at about 2.2 uh, workers, um, and uh, therefore India will grow slower than either China or the Asian tigers. So, to confirm, if you peak at a low ratio of work potential working age people to dependents, you grow slowly and Africa still has several decades before it gets to that point. So what can be done to change this situation? Two things can be done. We can uh, advance your demographic dividend, bring it forward closer so that instead of we, us entering the demographic dividend in 2052, we get there quicker. And then we can try and uh, see what the impact would be of a higher peak, more people of working age population relative to dependents. This all is determined by f fertility rates. What drives fertility rates? The big, the deep driver of fertility rates is female education. Of course, female education changes very slowly. It takes a decade or two or three to change uh, female education rates from, let's say, five years to six years. And of course, because female education in low income countries is low, that's where you have the highest total fertility rates. Something that is much that has a much shorter fuse that can be done in a much shorter time horizon is to roll, a, roll out contraception. There is a large unmet demand of contraceptive use in Africa. In actual fact, we estimate that at about equivalent to around two children per woman. So what we did at the African Futures and Innovation Program is we modeled a scenario uh, that looks at what would the impact be of rolling out contraceptives much more aggressively than the current path forecast. We did that using the International Futures Forecasting System that is hosted and developed uh, by the Frederick S. Party Center uh, at the University of Denver. Uh, the impact of this is that um, we changed, uh, raised uh, uh, contraceptive use so that Africa's total fertility rate by 2050 would be two children per woman instead of 2.7 uh, children per woman. And that Africa would therefore achieve a peak demographic dividend in 2060 instead of 2072. That is a difference of 12 years through which we advance the demographic dividend. The impact is amazing. By 2050, Africa would firstly have 250 million less people. That's a quarter of a billion less Africans. By 2050, it would mean that there are 112 million Africans less living in extreme poverty. It would mean that average incomes in Africa by 2050 would be $1,800 per person more. And that Africa's total economy would be $1.7 trillion larger than otherwise. These are huge changes. So, to conclude, I think that a focus on uh, changing Africa's fertility future, particularly issues around family planning, is, is a no-brainer. Without changing Africa's demographic momentum, we will not be able to improve livelihoods. This issue, the demographic future of Africa, must be part of our conversation on the future of Africa.